kind of thing. If you imagine yourself uh, in the winter driving along at 70 miles an hour and it starts to rain, you slow down to the speed limit and then it starts to snow and you slow down even further, it starts to blizzard, you, you, you stop at an end of the night. Your time to get home keeps increasing. And if you measure your time in your, your distance in terms of hours rather than miles, you are accelerating the size of your universe. And in fact, I think this is exactly what's happening with the acceleration of the universe. The light speed is changing. Well, you, there are ways you can... It's, it's better, you can describe things in different ways. And you can use... I mean, this is one reason why you see space time pictures, because you draw the light. Now you could say, is the light slowing down? That just means you draw your picture with the curves looking more narrow like this. But there is this freedom to draw it one way or the other. And to call it the slowing down of the speed of light is a way that can be useful, but it's not any different. Um, so you have this freedom to use all different kinds of coordinates of light in general relativity. So you could use coordinates which make it look as though the light speed is slowed down. But the basic point is that the light actually follows those curves. And, and uh, the cones are adjusted in such a way that it causes these lensing effects. Whether you call that light slowing down or not, it's, you're perfectly entitled to do that. Uh, but that is with respect to some coordinate description in which the light looks as it's slowed down. But you might use another description in which it has it. So there's all this freedom that one has in how you describe things in general. And the way you're describing it, I think, is perfectly legitimate. It's just uh, I haven't put it that way in my description. Uh, some theories in science can actually be disproven if you do an observation or experiment and find it's not uh, observed. Other theories, and this seems to be one of them, you might be lucky enough to prove it if uh, the observations do show this kind of pattern in the microwave background radiation. But if it doesn't show that pattern within certain limits, all you can say is that, well, the effect must be smaller Oh, no. the, the size of the effect is predicted in the theory? Yes. There is one proviso, and there is a reasonably... Let, I'm saying, it's, I think it's pretty tight. And that if the observations don't agree with this, one's going to have to throw the idea out. So it, it really is... It's not as though I can say, well, the effect is smaller, because the effects are pretty well fixed. Now, there is a proviso, you see, and it might be, I do all reasonably, if I've done that, you know that things haven't worked out well. I could say, well, the previous eon, the constants of nature have some quite different value, and that's why these things don't come out the way I predicted, you see. And that's the reasonably answer which you're <laughs> proposing I might adopt in a certain sense. But I, I, okay, it might even be that that is the right answer, that the constants of nature may completely change from one eon to the next, and then, who knows? But I'm hopeful here that the situation is that the constants of nature don't change, don't change much. I hope they don't change at all, in which case the predictions are very tough. You could really do a lot of, of checks on this whole scheme, uh, which uh, and the prediction of how much the, the uh, microwave, the variations in the microwave background are, is pretty well determined. So I don't think I have that freedom, unless I'm going to make, let's say, be weaselly and say, no, no, the numbers might be quite different than the previous year. Okay, maybe that they're different in some consistent way which leads to some self-consistent picture which would be different from my universe but uniform in some way. I hope not. I hope they're the same as our universe and that we can see these effects. If they're not, it's, it's going to be a more rocky ride in this picture. And I agree with you that that's, that that's not very satisfactory. That, uh, um, Really, that what I'm certainly proposing is that the previous eon is very much like ours. And the numbers are basically the same. And then it's time. Uh, maybe one more question? Is that right? I think that's probably all we have time for. Thank you. About uh, 20 years ago, there was a fascinating article in uh, Scientific American, which uh, made a relationship between essentially information theory and thermodynamics, basically saying you can't extract uh, information in an isotherm. And therefore, as the universe expands and the whole universe becomes isothermal, don't we expect all information to be lost anyway? But that's not true in this model. 
I mean, yeah, it's a fair suggestion. But in this model, there are a number of effects which will never get lost. And one of these is electromagnetic radiation. You might think as the universe expands, it will get weaker and weaker and weaker, you might as well forget it. But that's not true, because in this conformal rescaling, you get it all back again, and it makes its mark on that future boundary. You might as well think about gravitational radiation. If, if, if this simply spreads out, gets weaker and weaker, and you can forget, forget it. That's not true either, because you find that although the bar curvature, which is the usual measure of the intensity of gravitational weather, or the bar curvature gets zero, goes to zero, the thing which measures the gravitational field does not go to zero, it remains fine. But more importantly, that determines the derivative of the wire curvature across from one E onto the next. That normal derivative translates into a tangential derivative in the amount of distribution that's created. It's never lost. This has two effects. There's a thing called the magnetic part of the gravitational, uh, of the wire curvature, only of the normal derivative of it. The magnetic part and the electric part. One of these determines the mass variations in the dark matter, if I'm claiming it is, in the next eon. The other gives you actual curvature, conformal curvature in the geometry. So it's never quite, well, it's never quite in the city space. You see, the image that people have of this infinitely expanding universe in the cosmological term is that it approaches what's called a city space. That's sort of true in a rough sense, but these irregularities are always going to be there. And, and the deviations from the city space come about from the gravitational radiation and they're completely determined in relation to your question. They're absolutely determined by the black hole collisions in the previous eon. You know. And they're non-zero and non-trivial. They're, they're significant. So one would expect to see that too, maybe by some careful measurements of microwave background to see that the curvature of that background is not quite flat. Not quite conformal to that, it's got irregularities to it. It would be very interesting to see where one can extract that information. So it never quite, it doesn't disappear. All right, well, <clears throat> thank you all for coming. Um... <clears throat> we did, by the way, carefully uh, set up refreshments for all of you.